So this is our fourth problem dealing with cylindrical and spherical coordinates. Um, we're going to evaluate the triple integral over some region w of the function x dv. Our w is given by this inequality, square root x squared plus y squared less than equal to z, less than equal to 3. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is try and get a sense of what this region looks like. So I essentially have two equations, sort of our boundary. So we have z equals square root x squared plus y squared. Um, if I think about this in cylindrical, x squared plus y squared is r squared. And so that sort of turns into z equals r here. So if I think about that z equals r, I can graph, sort of one way I'll view this, in sort of a z r plane. z equals r is a line like this, slope 1. And then my sort of surface here my, is I'm going to rotate this line around the z-axis. So this is r. There's sort of a theta going around, going on too. That's going to be a rotate. And so what I'm going to get when I rotate, something like this. So I'm going to get actually, a, it's a cone here if you look at it. So I get a cone here. Um, that's the first inequality. The other inequality is z equals 3. So if I take this z equals 3, at somewhere on z I get a 3, and then I get sort of this, well, it's going to just cut this in sort of a circle here. So I'd extend out as a plane, but I have a cone that has sort of height 3. Now, if we were finding the volume, you'd be almost done here because there's a nice formula for volume of a cone. It's one-third the volume of the corresponding cylinder. You could find the area of the base pretty readily here. Um, but we're not integrating 1 here. We're integrating x. So we're not finding a volume here. We're doing some kind of mass or a moment or something like this. Okay. So let's just get a better look at this particular shape. Whoop, that's not what we want. We want this picture here. So this is the, the sort of general shape. So you can see this in a, I guess, better picture than my drawing here. So this is the Mathematica object here. Um, what we'll do, though, is look at, we're integrating x. So one thing I'll do is you can, what I'll say is you can actually do this integral without really doing any calculations at all. Once you think about what the shape looks like, we're integrating x. And then down here, whoops, we're integrating the function x. I went and drew the same cone, but now this green plane, that's where x equals 0. And if you look at this, that splits this cone completely in half, two symmetric pieces. Well, if we're integrating x on the, let's see, these are positive x's on the right, sort of this right-hand part is going to cancel out the left-hand part. And so if I think about that, there's symmetry here. And what I can say right away is that the answer is my triple integral of w, x dv, this equals 0. And I can do this by symmetry of w, sort of about the plane x equals 0. So w is symmetric about x equals 0. So if I integrate x, it's kind of like being an odd function integrating sort of from negative a to a. Here. So I get a 0. OK, so that's maybe not so interesting. Let's actually go and evaluate this. We can do this both in spherical and cylindrical coordinates. We'll do some integrals, see how they'd be 0 if we didn't pick up on sort of this trick right away. OK, so let's do this. So let's maybe try, let's do cylindrical first. So I'm going to get a triple integral. x is r cos theta. My Jacobian is r. And now I'm going to do bounds. Probably what's going to turn out is I want to do a dz. And then dr and d theta don't necessarily matter a whole lot what order they're in. So I'm going to want to do dz first. And I'm thinking here that I have sort of this bottom function being the cone and this top function being sort of that circle or the plane there. So that's sort of nice bounds for z. OK, so theta is going to go 0 to 2 pi. R, I'm really looking at this red circle here, sort of the shadow of this cone here. If I sort of had water fall down from the top, here the shadow would be sort of that red circle there. So that red circle, well, that's where 3, how do I say this? It's where z equals 3. So 3 equals square root x squared plus y squared. So that would be the red circle. I get z is 3, but also z is square root x squared plus y squared. So I get 3 equals square root x squared plus y squared. And that gives me 9 equals, well, let's not do it that way. Let's do 3 x squared plus y squared is r squared. And so that is, whoops, that goes to r equals 3. Or 
This cone here is the sort of equation z equals r in cylindrical, and we're letting z equal 3, so this is r equals 3. So in any case, our radius starts at 0 and goes out to 3. So those are our r bounds. Our z bounds are a little bit different. They start at this cone. Well, that's z equals r, and they go up to the sort of circle or that plane, and that's at z equals 3. So there we go. That's not so bad. Um, and now we want to integrate this. I'm going to do z first. There's no z's, so I'm going to multiply by the length of this interval, which is 3 minus r. I'm going to get an integral 0 to 2 pi, integral 0 to 3. I can do the r times the r. That's r squared, cosine theta. And then what I got here was a 3 minus r. Now, a thought occurred to me here. When I'm doing this, is I have this cosine theta here. I'm integrating d theta from 0 to 2 pi. So maybe I could do the r first here. But let's just do the theta first and see what happens. And my suspicion is that's going to get me my 0. So I get r squared times 3 minus r. I have cosine theta d theta dr. So I can just change the order here. There's no variables here, so they're sort of just rectangles. Um, and you know, sort of in r and theta here. So I can just change the order of integration. And now when I do my integral, I get 0 to 3. Get r squared 3 minus r. Integrate cosine theta. That's sine theta. But then I go from theta equals 0 to theta equals 2 pi. Still have a dr. Well, theta sine of 2 pi is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. So this just goes to an integral 0 to 3, r squared 3 minus r times 0 minus 0. But that's 0, so the whole thing is 0. You could integrate with respect to r, you know, distribute the r squared to get 3r squared minus r cubed. You can evaluate that if you want to. You'd get some number here. But in the end, you get an answer 0. I'll note here I wasn't as efficient as I could have been. I probably shouldn't have done dz first. I could have put d theta first. Knowing theta would go to 0 to 2 pi, and z does not depend on theta, I would have integrated this cosine theta right away, gotten a 0. I wouldn't even have to do the integral with respect to z. Not that it's that hard, but just a little less efficient. OK, now we want to do our spherical integral. Just complete overkill here. We had x in spherical. That's rho sine phi cosine theta. So that was x. That was the function we're integrating. And then our Jacobian is rho squared sine phi. That always shows up in a spherical coordinates integral. Now, again, I'm going to look at, oh, I have this cosine theta. I'm going to do a d theta first. And I have to think of, do I want to do d phi or d rho here? So when I look at my picture, let me look at our, whoops, there I am here. So what's going to happen here is that this cone, if you think about it, this is actually a fixed phi. So this is going to be phi is some angle. So cones with this point at the origin, this is a fixed phi. So phi is the angle from the positive z-axis. Sort of go down a bit, and then I rotate around with theta. That gives me that cone. So this is a fixed phi. It's going to go from 0 to something. And then rho is going to go from 0 out to this particular uh, z equals 3 plane, or that circle. So that makes me think, because I need rho to potentially depend on phi, I'm going to do rho inside of phi. OK, now my bounds. Theta, it's the easy one, goes 0 to 2 pi. Phi starts at 0. So again, phi starts at 0. And it's going to go down to whatever angle this is. Now there's a couple ways to find that angle here. One is, is I can draw a triangle. So let's just maybe go back up to our picture here. Um, let's go a little bit more. I can draw a triangle. Let's just draw this in sort of an orange color here. There's sort of this triangle here. And if I look at that triangle, I'm going to get rid of this down here for a bit. Um, what I get, do my triangle, I get an angle. There's the phi, really, that I want as my upper bound. This height, well, that's at z equals 3, so that's a 3. This distance here, what's that? It's the radius of the sphere. Or, no, sorry, the, not the radius of the sphere. It's this distance here. It would be the radius of a sphere if we had a sphere, but we don't. So I don't really have that. Um, this other leg, well, that's the radius of this circle, which we found already to be uh, 3, not square root of 3, 3. So we get, whoops, 
sorry, technical difficulties. So we get a three here. And so we have an isosceles right triangle. That means phi is gonna be 45 degrees or pi over four. So our bound here is phi goes from zero to pi over four. Now you can also find that in a little bit different way. We know that the top surface was z equals three. So we go from z equals three here. So that tells us that, let's see, z equals three, we're there. Um, the other surface is z equals square root x squared plus y squared. So that's the cone and this is the plane. So when they intersect, they intersect when three equals square root x squared plus y squared. Or no, let's not do that. Z equals, yeah, so we're on the cone. Let's maybe just think about the cone. So we actually don't need a little bit overkill here. So I really need to do z equals square root x squared plus y squared. I'm gonna find the phi that corresponds to it. So I said a cone should be a fixed phi. So let's find the phi that sort of describes this particular cone. What I can do is write these out in spherical coordinates. So z is rho cosine phi equals square root. X is rho sine phi cos theta squared. And then my y squared, let's, uh, let's just do this in a place where we have more room. So let's maybe go down. Yeah, let's actually just go up here. So our equation here was we had rho, so we had z equals square root x squared plus y squared. z is rho cosine phi, and that's gonna be square root rho sine phi cosine theta, that's x in spherical coordinates, plus we have rho sine phi sine theta, that's y in spherical coordinates squared. So I get rho cosine phi equals square root, I get rho squared sine squared phi cosine squared theta plus rho squared sine squared phi sine squared theta. Extend that square root out. Now we get this rho squared sine phi, rho squared, sorry, rho squared sine squared phi sort of as a coefficient or of both cosine squared theta and sine squared theta. So I end up with rho cosine phi is the square root of rho squared sine squared phi times cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. And so we get rho cos phi equals, well, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is one. So you just get rho squared sine squared phi. And so I get rho cos phi should be the square root of this, which is gonna be rho sine phi. And we're dealing with phi's here where, or where I get sine of phi and cosine phi to both be positive. So I don't have to worry about any of this like absolute value of sine phi because phi is somewhere between zero and pi over two because we're in sort of that upper half, well, half, um, half space. Okay, so we need to solve this equation. I can divide by the phi, the rows. I get cosine phi equals sine phi. If you think about that, that just tells me phi is pi over four. So instead of doing the geometry, you can actually just use the equations and find phi as well. We get the same phi. So that's our pi over four there. Now rho, rho now goes from zero. So that's on our cone, starts at zero and it goes out to until I hit this surface, z equals three. So I need to do z equals three. We can do that over here. Find that as uh, z equals three, really solve for rho. Z is rho cosine phi equals three. So rho is three over cosine phi, or you could write that as three secant phi. So I get an upper row bound of three over cosine phi. So I have a phi in that bound, so I need to have d phi outside of d rho. Okay, so I set this up in spherical coordinates. Now, what we need to do is evaluate this. Now I put the d theta on the inside here, and the reason for that is we'll get this zero right away. So you can evaluate this out, do the integrals. They should work out sort of just fine here. But what I'm gonna do is say, I'm gonna do the integral respect to theta first. So I have a rho cubed, rho times rho squared. I have a sine squared phi, but then when I integrate cosine theta, I get sine theta, and you know, theta equals zero to theta equals two pi. So this is very much like the cylindrical integral. So 
theta equals 2 pi, that's 0, or sorry, sine of 2 pi is 0, sine of 0 is 0, and so what I get, same thing again, I get an integral from 0 to pi over 4, integral from 0 to 3 over cosine phi, I get rho cubed sine squared phi, which I could go try and integrate, and I get really this times 0 minus 0, d rho d phi, and so I just get 0 here. So there I did this problem um, in cylindrical coordinates and then spherical coordinates, but really at the first, sort of thinking about it geometrically where you see some kind of symmetry that tells you right away the answer is 0.